I'm here with uh, Libby Mitchell and uh, Jack E. Jet. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, folks. Hey. Hello. And uh, Libby, you're the organizer of this Indie Club Gong Show event, is that mm -hmm. right? Yes, it is. And uh, you, do you serve as one of the judges also? Or no, you? I don't. Okay. Well, well, give us a bit of background on the Indie Club itself and, and the Dallas chapter. Okay. The Indie Club's an international group of uh, filmmakers, from makeup artists to directors to um, DPs and, and writers. So uh, the Dallas chapter itself has over 700 members right now. It's one of the largest parts of, of Indie Club as a whole. Uh, currently they have, I think, over 35,000 members. So that, and that's from here to Ireland to Israel. So there's a whole bunch of us out there. Right. And the uh, Indie Club in Dallas is, one, like I said, one of the most active chapters. We have meetings every month, currently the last Friday of every month, so people will come in and see a uh, director or a filmmaker, and they'll talk about their projects, or we'll have a happy hour. Usually in the summertime, it's happy hours because everybody's working. Sure. So. We love a happy hour. <laughs> we do, too, here in Vegas. Uh, well, Jack, you're one of the celebrity judges. Mm -hmm. And um, along with KRA's uh, Gina Mascaro and, and film actor Drew Waters, uh, what do you think qualifies you to serve as a judge on this panel? Mm, probably because I'm a video short freak. I've been watching video shorts forever and been fascinated with them. I think from the standpoint that I think it takes a little more talent to tell a story in three minutes, five minutes, eight, ten minutes than it does an hour and a half. I've always admired the, the, uh, the talents of uh, short filmmakers in condensing a story and keeping it really, you know, keeping it very entertaining. And there, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Sometimes. <laughs> exactly, sometimes. <laughs> qualities do you look for in an outstanding short film? Well, I think for me a lot of it has uh, with the editing, I'm because I, I started out doing uh, doing editing, so I like to watch the way people cut their film. Uh, also the acting is really important to me if they uh, chose really good actors and the great thing about uh, Dallas is that we really have some incredible actors here to choose from, from all, you know, from kids to to elderly people, so it's a great choice of actors. So there's no excuse for a, a director or a casting person for a short film not to be able to find good actors. So the casting selection is another one, and the direction, the way they move the actors around. And uh, you've got a new internet TV channel kicking off, is that right? Well, we actually have one, I have called, one called FUTV, right. uh, which is a little, a little retaliation uh, <laughs> for, those, uh, for those big networks who refuse to take our show. But I also do a show with Sandra Bernhard uh, uh, called The Queer Edge, and it's currently airing in uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Belgium. So I'm really happy about that. So I like that when you do a show, a group of shows, you finish them, you sell them, and you still make money off of them when you're not having to do any work. That's a, uh, is there a way for people to see the Queer Edge here? Yeah, there is because it's on uh, it's on uh, video on demand sites like okay. TLA and uh, others like that that uh, that offer very video on demand. Gotcha. Libby, how's the gong show program going to work uh, functionally? Will there be an actual gong? Mm -hmm. Yes, we uh, we got an email today that we have gotten our three-foot gong, so we're pretty excited about it. And the mallet. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen? You'll, you'll show a, a short film? Mm -hmm. We'll show a short film. They get one minute in order to um, just let, let it run so everybody can get a feel for it in the audience. Uh, what we're going to encourage the filmmakers to do is to uh, keep the judges from gonging it because the longer that they can keep the film going and it's all audience participation so the main thing is to get the filmmakers involved get the audience involved to keep their film going as long as possible sure so um, it should be a lot of fun the thing we want to avoid is a game gong right right <laughs> uh, because there are game gongs when the film is really so bad that if you don't gong the film you're 
it's going to get brutal. And also, no audience members. We've had this happen before. Can grab the mallet oh, yes, and we gong. We've seen that happen. You know, I can't see that happen. We actually had someone come tearing through the audience, grab the gong, and uh -huh. grab the mallet and hit the gong yeah. because they were, <laughs> were like, they "Oh my ejected? God, this is horrible." Were they ejected from the theater? At that time, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think Brandon ejected them. <laughs> well, uh, how many films will be queued up for the screening on June twenty second? Eighteen, I believe. Yeah. Wonderful. Good, good program. Um, do other chapters of the Indie Club put on similar events? Uh, or is the gong show idea just, you know? The gong show the, idea was actually uh, started by Kim Fishman, who was the original uh, Indie Club director for Dallas uh, up until 2004. She lives in New York now. But uh, she was the one who originally started it all off. Uh -huh. And so it's, it's her idea. And so we've progressed it over to, what, to where it is now. And do other chapters around the country also do? Uh, they do various other things. They might have fundraisers, and um, like the Seattle, where the headquarters is. They actually did a, their own indie club movie, uh -huh. so that was different. Um, but most of them don't. Now, our indie club gong show has a, uh, a mission, so to speak. What we'd like to have is uh, a Dallas film grant that is available to everybody around the country, and that's what the gong show is for, is to raise money to begin a Dallas film grant so people will come here to Dallas to film their, their uh, shorts and feature films. Great. And Libby brought in some, some awesome sponsors for this as well. It's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of really yeah, good including, Dallas Including, I Dallas. presume, the, uh, the Studio Movie Grill, which mm -hmm. is hosting. Exactly. She's been doing some heavy-duty schmoozing, this girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, between me and Brandon, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Mary Jo Pell of MST3K fame is going to MC. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Why was she chosen for the MC? Uh, basically, she has a background in there, as you know, of what uh, it's all about with what she was doing. It's all looking at short films and talking about them and, I guess, critiquing them mm -hmm. in her own little way. <laughs> cool. And uh, bottom line, why should people go to the Studio Movie Grill on June 22nd to see the event? Uh, I think primarily because I'm going to be there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> are, there, but, but are there other reasons, too? No, just you. That, I mean, that's, that's one of the main reasons. But the prizes, what are the prizes again? Uh, yeah, we have some cash prizes, uh, 1500 on down. We also have an honorable mention award. So there are cash prizes for the filmmakers who make it through being gone. So that's a, um, a real incentive for them. Also, uh, it helps to sponsor things here in Dallas. The, uh, film grant, as well as to get the names of the filmmakers out there, is for people who haven't had a chance to see their films before. It's actually going to be on the big screen. So I've, I actually had some of the actors already contact me saying, "That film made it. I'm in that film." <laughs> Great. And fifteen hundred dollars will get you a tank of gas. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. So, uh, 